Here's a giant Pacific octopus in an equally giant aquarium tank. Okay, that's all great for mom and dad and the whole family who come to see the octopus, except... Well, there are sharks in this tank as well. Sharks that are voracious predators and opportunistic feeders. And that have been known to veer from their usual fishy diets to munch on an occasional octopus. These are spiny dogfish sharks. Did anybody ask the octopus about this? Uh, no. What the aquarium folks are thinking is that the octopus can use its ability to camouflage itself as protection. And if that doesn't work, it has the strength to fight off the shark, or at least dash to the nearest hiding hole it can squeeze into. The aquarium folks soon realize what does happen when you put these sharks and octopi in the same tank, and you're about to see it too if you've got the courage to keep watching, if only through your splayed fingers. The octopus, not in the habit of attacking sharks. The shark, sharp spines jutting up from its dorsal fins that can puncture anything that touches them. The octopus, can its powers of defense save it in such tight quarters? The shark, menacing on the prowl just itching to use those rows of teeth to crush its next meal. I've got a feeling this real-life version of Jaws isn't going to be pretty. And so the shark... Um... The, the sh shark... Uh... <laughs> boy, am I glad I didn't have a bet down on this matchup. That's right. This is what happened. The giant Pacific octopus, as seen here in this amazing, so close you feel like you might get squashed footage, was making short work of the shark in the tank. Dogfish carcasses kept showing up at the bottom of the tank. What you're seeing, this footage, was taken to see what was doing in these supposedly invincible predators. The aquarium staff learned something new about the octopi. There was a danger in the tank, all right, but it was all to the sharks. That's one way to defend yourself from a predator. Eliminate them. In northern Canada, winter slowly loosens its grip and a young polar bear is hungry. It sniffs a meal already in progress and decides to play a dangerous game of food snatch. His opponent is larger, older, and won't tolerate a rival. A second try. He scores a quick nibble. It is a game of patience and cunning, but a loss can result in death. Adult males will kill younger bears if it suits them. The older male has had enough. He charges, pushing the adolescent further and further back. The young one admits defeat and retreats to safe ground. He begins a new game, a waiting game. The older bear devours his meal, licking the carcass clean of blubber. When the adult male has had his fill, he wanders off, leaving the scraps for his opponent. The young one feeds on the remains. It wins a consolation prize of sorts, a full belly. But it will be a long time before it's ready to compete again. Whenever a huge tree falls in the Costa Rican rainforest, a gap of sunlight is formed in the canopy. New life competes for this light, like this vine racing this sapling upward. 
But there's one tree that never has any competition. Thanks to an incredible symbiotic relationship it shares with an ant. The swollen thorn acacia and its namesake, the acacia ant, have developed harmonious roles in each other's lives. The ant's role is as protector. If any of those vines try to steal the acacia's light, the ant's security guards go to work. A few good chomps on the vine stems, and it's lights out for the vine. The ants don't stop there. This relatively huge grasshopper may think it's going to take a few bites out of the non-poisonous acacia, but the ants take a few bites out of it instead. And they throw in a few stings for good measure. In exchange for all this protection, the tree takes on the provider role. It gives the insect everything it needs in terms of food and shelter. These little nodules, or nectaries, secrete a sweet nectar for the adult ants to eat. And these brownish pods at the end of some leaves are the perfect nutrient-packed food for the ants developing young called larvae. The acacia ant larvae live down hollowed out thorns at the base of the acacia leaves. Some will eventually grow into adults with wings and will fly off to replicate this evolutionary masterpiece in a new acacia. Now, these aren't your average, eat you as soon as look at you African crocodiles here. These are crocodiles spinning in a feeding frenzy, tearing apart an antelope. They're busy, to say the least, with a big job to do. Enter a hippo. Our hippo inexplicably starts to lick the bodies of the feeding crocodiles. Scientists haven't figured out why yet, but hippos seem to enjoy hanging with these bloodthirsty killers as they shred their victim and gorge on its flesh. Talk about insolence. Why do the crocs put up with this? Well, first of all, the hippos are no threat. They're vegetarian. Secondly, the hippos are more powerful than the crocs, so the crocs carry on as if the hippos aren't even there. And if you think this is bold, here's a baby hippo wading into a bevy of crocodiles. You know, it must be genetic. The baby hippo immediately starts gnawing on the spines of the croc's back. Now, this has got to be annoying, but, well, what are they going to do? Answer? Nothing. You want to know how hippos feel about the so-called danger of getting too close to a crocodile? Yeah, so I guess that about sums it up. Here in the southeastern United States, these besieged plants have actually sent up a chemical mist, an SOS to these black wasps. Why? Because black wasps are known as aphid killers, and some aphids are busily sucking the life out of these plants. Now, despite its nickname, this wasp isn't here merely to kill the aphids. No, that would be too easy. Like a character in a James Bond movie, the wasp has a more exquisite punishment for the aphid. With a clinical precision, the wasp injects a single egg into each aphid's body. This means a slow death for the aphid as the wasp egg grows inside it. Each wasp can plant eggs in 200 aphids. The aphids send out their own chemical alarm systems and the colony panics. But it's too late. The wasp has done its work. Hasta la vista, baby. And we mean baby. 
the aphids face a gruesome death. The ravenous wasp larva will eat the aphid alive from the inside out. The aphid's body becomes the incubator for the young of its predator. A new generation of assassins will soon emerge, littering these killing fields with corpses. Okay, now here's the money shot. The young wasp emerging to seek out more aphids to begin this cycle all over again. The wasp with its exquisitely deathly plan. And yet, just doing what nature's programmed it to do. With everything you've learned from the video and from class, please define these words. Have them ready for discussion when you come to class.